All right, hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about volume controls with uh, SLU. So we'll talk about the SLU itself. I'm trying to make this a quick video here. Um, so let's move on to uh, Sigma Studio. There I have the project loaded. I have a couple of volume controls uh, that I had up there from the previous video um, where um, we have a remote volume control and an irregular uh, hardware SLU volume control already up in the project. Um, so what I'm going to do first is going to jump onto the software SLU and talk about that. Let me get um, this a little easier for you to see. I'm going to uh, dislodge the, um, <laughs> the actual window here and um, so we can see the different settings. So under volume controls, of course, open up volume controls, adjustable gain, and then we have uh, the hardware SLU or the software SLU. So I'm going to open up the software SLU one. And we have a, a, a few different choices. Well, actually, let me, uh, two different choices, RC optimized and RC accurate. And pretty much it's as you would expect from the definition. Uh, it's an, they're an RC curve um, coming down and going up. And... Um, uh, one of them is uh, is accurate. It's an it's a it's a good mathematically accurate RC curve. Um, so it's a very precise, which is handy if you're wanting longer or real specific slews. Um, it gives you a, a give you a real accurate RC curve. Um, the optimized one is it's approximated RC, but it's fewer instructions. So if you're if you're trying to save instructions, and in, in which on the ADAU 1701 is important, um, the the RC optimized SLU is usually fine for most audio applications. You're not going to hear the zipper noise. That's the purpose of the SLU, is to give you a whole bunch of really small steps. So that's what it does. It says, look, I'm at this volume control. I want to go up to this volume control, and it's going to, and you say go, it's not just going to jump to that volume control it's going to do it in a bunch of really small, imperceptible steps. Um, you know, every sample period, a little bit of a, a little more, a little more, a little more. And, um, and it makes for a smooth volume up or down without any zipper noise, the, the little clicking you hear. Um, and, and try that. Do an experiment uh, on your DSP. Put, put, in, um, put in one volume control that doesn't have slew and another volume with slew. And put in music or an oscillator, you can really hear it with a tone. Um, and then listen on the headphones and adjust one and then adjust the other. You'll see the difference. One of them's nice and smooth, and the other one is a -da 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 -da. you'll hear all the noise. You hear the zipper noise. Um, the reason why the the no slew is handy is if you're gonna if it's a calibration or something where you're gonna adjust it maybe once. And then that's it. You're setting up a room. You're setting up for a particular speaker, whatever. You you, it's a gain control that will rarely, if ever, be used. So just set the gain, and you know who cares if it clicks right the second when I'm a when I'm adjusting a crossover. Uh, I I don't care. You know, once I got the setting, I save the settings. I compile. I put it onto the EEPROM, and it's done. Um, and so, uh, save the instructions. Um, but, um, anyhow, uh, anything that's going to be controlled in real time has to have SLU of some sort. Uh, same goes for, by the way, same goes for mute controls and, or the selector switches. Uh, we have the, there's slewable types and non-slewable types because you, uh, uh, if it's real time, uh, operation, you usually want it to slew. Okay, so that's the difference there. So let's do the optimized one. Uh, otherwise, they're basically the same. You get single, multiple, and um, and then the software slew adjustable, and then likewise uh, with the accurate. So what's the difference between these? If I put the single volume or the slew adjustable, okay, here's the deal. This one, we have no adjustments. We cannot adjust what the slew is. You can do this in the parameters if you want to, if you know the math, etc. It's 
uh, more confusing than it needs to be. Um, so, uh, you know, usually it, it doesn't take any more or less instructions. So I hardly ever use this regular single volume. I'll use this one where I actually have the slew, the adjustable control, so I can enter in the slew number. And these are numbers that represent slew times. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, if you go onto Engineer Zone, there are posts. If you say software slew times and search, um, you're going to find posts that, uh, that have it. If I think of it, I'll try to put it in the comment section of the video here when I uh, post this video, uh, some of the links directly to Engineer Zone. Um, but, uh, but that's where a lot of this information has been up there, the slew times. It's been asked. It's been documented uh, by several different users of what these actual slew times are for the software slew. Um, so uh, that's the difference between the software slew. Um, I think really not much more to say about those. Um, let me park this back here. And let's talk about the hardware slew. Now, the hardware slew, there's a thing called the hardware slew accelerator. Uh, and I guess I'll just pull this document up first. Again, this document, I have posted it on Engineer Zone on some of the answers. So you can find it on Engineer Zone. Um, is this good enough here? I guess if I make it a little smaller, I'll make it fit in this window. Sure, that works for me. Um, yeah, okay, so um, uh, there's there's a document you, you can find this and download it. I'll try to put the link on again. Uh, anyhow, uh, there's a document explaining what they are. And so on the slew accelerators, you can choose different slews for when the volume's going up versus when it's going down. You can have two different settings, which is really cool. And then th um, the three basic settings are the RC type, which we just talked about with the software slew. But you have also a linear, where it's just a linear change, which can be handy if you want to do some sort of function um, in a compressor or whatever, I suppose. And then there's a constant time where I want the slew to take this amount of time, no matter what the dB difference is. I want it done in a certain amount of time. Um, and then exponential. Um, for the up modes, for going up in volume, we have four different selections. Going down in volume, the RC and the exponential are the same. Uh, so they're, they're, both, they're both the same curve, and then linear, and then constant time. So you have a, 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 a bringing the volume up, you can choose what the slew is, and down, you can choose what the slew is. For the slew type, and then, um, uh, and then there's the actual setting for how fast or how long. Uh, this document explains some of this, but basically there's a register setting. And in the register setting, you have a, a slew type. So you have, um, uh, here in the 32-bit register, you have uh, uh, a time constant for up, time constant for down, the curve type for up, and the curve type for down. So you have four different subfields in this register. And uh, so the type uh, the table here tells you the type 0 is linear, constant dB, RC, or constant time. If you come over to this, this is a hardware slew. Like, again, if I mouse over, it says hardware slew. If I right-click on this lower part, okay, slew type, and, okay, when we select slew type, we have RC, constant dB, or linear, or custom, well, that's a little different. We had three types before, you know, the exponent, the RC or exponential. Um, so this, these are the choices we have from the GUI directly. Custom means you can go in there and you can set the value of that register. So you can decode this. It's in hex. You can decode that hex value to see what's the up type, the down type, and the the the, the constant, the, the slew times for the up and down. Um, so this allows you to put it right in here and, and custom value, um, which is awesome. On the um, on some of the other some of the controls, and certainly the external, it has it a little bit more handy for you here. 
you have this blue button you can change the slew type. If you mouse over it, it tells you what it is, and you see a straight line, linear slew. I switch it, exponential, RC, constant time. Likewise, for going down, I have linear, exponential, RC, constant time. So we have all the settings there available um, on the GUI, and then we have the actual setting for the up and the down times, the, the, the actual slew time. So, so this external control one gives you it right here handy, so you don't have to do the custom. Uh, it might still be there. Eh, no, it isn't, because we have everything controlled. There's no reason to write the code to do that, because the controls are all right there in the on the front of the GUI. Uh, whereas these, it's hidden away. You got to go down to the slew type um, to get to it. Um, let me jump onto the topic if, uh, of how we would control this with a microcontroller, and it's really rather easy. Uh, let me go to the magnified screen here, and. Um, you see I have the capture window set here, and there are the volume controls. And um, so the uh, the slew mode, you can see, is one of the parameters. So you can change it. And notice it's, it's 2088A, 208A. Um, so it, it will, uh, it's already the default value that we saw in the custom settings. And so, um, so you can change the slew mode on the fly with your microcontroller. No big deal. Then we have two other parameters, gain and target. Gain is what it is at the moment. So you can always read that gain location, memory location, and you know exactly what the gain of that control is at any particular moment. So that is a, a way to get some feedback for you. Um, but if you're going to set the gain, don't write to, directly to that gain. I mean, you could, but don't do it. Uh, you want to use the slew. So you're going to write to the target. So you're going to set the target and then write to it. If I wanted to try to change this directly myself, uh, what the microcontroller would do, would go right to the target and, uh, and watch the meter. The meter is sitting at minus 9 dB. I'm going to change this back to a unity gain, which it should go to minus 3. So I'm going to hit a 1 and hit enter, and boom, minus 3. It jumped right up to it. Um, but notice the slider didn't change. If I go down, let me go down 20 dB, 0 0.1. We went down, look, the meter went down 20 dB. We changed the value. And if I refresh, click on this window, hit refresh, you see it sets 0.1. Um, but the meter, the, the, the actual GUI still says, still was where we left it at minus six. This is because we're bypassing the GUI. This is just what your microcontroller would do as well. It would write directly to the DSP. And that's what this params window is allowing us to do. And we're bypassing the actual GUI. Now I can go back to the GUI here and I can um, enter this as zero and you'll see it change in the params window and you see the actual um, uh, levels changed. And, of course, this still says the point 0.1 because we haven't refreshed it. Let me click on this and hit refresh, and you see it's, it's, it's a 1 now for Unity Gain. So, anyways, that's how you would control these with a microcontroller. You're going to write to the target. Don't write to the gain. But you can always read it to see what the actual gain setting is. Um, and, uh, and you can also write to the slew mode and change the slew mode on the fly if you wanted to. Um, it's the capabilities there. Um, anyways, that about does it. I think that's everything I need to cover for slews and uh, slew types. Don't forget to uh, click like and uh, to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.